have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. Hello, my name is Glenda Johnson, better known as G. Johnson. When I'm not busy, I like tuning in to Elations Radio on Saturday nights with Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow, Jr., where the topic of discussion is making marriage meaningful. It appeals to the saved and the unsaved. It's for couples who are married, couples who are thinking about marriage, and for those who are divorced yet considering remarriage. Now, this This discussion, Making Marriage Meaningful, is the most explicit, authentic relationship talk live here on Elations Radio. So save the date and time on your calendar. We look forward to hearing and seeing from you at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 9 o'clock p.m. Central. So tune in to the broadcast and be blessed. Amen.
Welcome to Making Marriage Meaningful. This is your host, Apostle Irvin Whitlow. Well, hey, the Lord bless you. God bless you. I, God bless you. So excited to be here on this evening to share with you in this time of discussion, making marriage meaningful. We salute you, we honor you, and we give God praise for you because you are joining me. Thank God for you. Now, I need you to tell your friend, tell your neighbor, tell your dog rover that making marriage meaningful is on the air. Oh, uh, because I'm telling you something good is about to come out of this conversation. Now, let me be the one to make it clear and put this disclaimer out there. I am not, I repeat, I am not, in case you did not hear me, I am not a relationship expert. I just share things based upon what God has said with me about lessons that I've learned in relationship after relationship over the past 25 plus years. All right, so uh, perhaps something that I say may help avoid some of the things, uh, help you to avoid some of the things I've been through. Now, not only will I tell you that I'm not a relationship expert, but I will also put this other disclaimer out there. This conversation, this conversation is real, it is raw. You're going to hear some real nitty-gritty stuff. Point blank, period. Most of all, this conversation is relevant. And I believe that as you hear and listen and take heed, that the Lord will speak to you and give you some clarity and help you along the way. So now that I've gotten that out of the way, please let me share with you that I don't do it by myself. I've been graced to have a, a group of kingdom minded people who share both from the Word of God and from personal experience in these things that I shall share with you. I'd like to introduce them to you tonight, uh, starting with uh, the one, the only, the Apostle Vincent L. Smith, all the way from the northern region, who has great wisdom to offer. Apostle Smith, are you with us tonight? I am here. I am here. Amen. He says, I am here. I am here. <laughs> Thank God for you, sir. Good to hear your voice. Amen. Let me see if I can get this other man of God, uh, who's not too far from Apostle Smith, if I can get this other man of God to join in, or we're going to be on a roll. I'm talking about the one, the only Bishop Jacket Ernest E. Richard Jr. Are you here, sir? What you do? Where you at? Oh, you got play. Don't say that. I ain't sipping wine. I ain't got on no roll. I did smooth. I'm smooth like a newborn. Hey, blessings, sir. How are you? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Lord, he's wired tonight. He's wired tonight. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got some rest. So y'all in trouble now. <laughs> oh, he got some rest. I don't know. Boy, you got to look out. All right, let me see. I know that this woman of God is always with us. I'm talking about the one, the only, G. Johnson. Are you with us tonight, woman of God? Praise the name of the Lord. I am here a hundred percent. Blessings to all. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will be glad in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. And I know that this individual is here because if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have this podcast at all. She's the producer of this podcast via Elation Radio and Elation Honors and Elation Magazine and all of that other good stuff. I am talking about the one, the only, a bona fide Dr. Kimmy Robinson. Dr. Kimmy, are you here on this evening? Yes. Kimmy Kim is on the line. Hello. Hello. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm just going to continue on rejoicing, rejoicing. I want to know, Dr. Kimmy, you going to be with us tonight, or you just going to be in and out? Oh, no, I'm I'm with you tonight. <laughs> I am with you. Who are you with? Who are you with? I'm with Apostle Smith, that's who, and Apostle Urban Whitlow, and Sister, Brenda, uh, Sister Glenda Johnson, you got picked on last week, but I got you back because I know how Elder is. Over here, Bishop, and so I, I'm with um, I'm with I'm with you today. Yeah. 
What you doing? Uh-huh. Where you at? I want to fight. So come back. I'm with you. Well, 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 we'll break for <laughs> we got Usher on too, so. <laughs> the Lord for each and every one of you tonight. And let me see. I don't want to overlook, amen, this brother and his wife. Amen. He's been here for the past several weeks with us, and he has so much wisdom to offer. I'm talking about uh, Brother Otis Gabriel. Are you and your wife here this evening? Yes, we are. Good evening. Good evening. This is Brother Otis Gabriel. Amen. Good, good. I'm so glad that Charlie, thank you so much, because we're going to talk about some heavy stuff, and we're really going to need some input tonight in Jesus' name. So, Bishop Designate Richard, would you be so kind as to lead us in a word of prayer? I'll get our scripture going, and we will go from there. Yes, I will. Precious Father, it's in the awesome name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we come one more time before you. God, thanking you for how you kept us all week long, God, through the trials, the troubles, tribulations, persecutions, the hurts, the pains, the victories, God. We thank you that we've arrived to this moment in this day, whereby we can lift your name up yet one more time in this particular week. God, we're placing this show into your charge. We're placing this show into your care. God, we're looking looking for you to do the unexpected. Open our ears, our minds, our hearts, our spirits. Allow fresh revelation to flow. Allow illumination to capture our spirits. Break up the fountains of the deep. Open thou our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. God, you said in your word, whatsoever things we desire when we pray, believe that we receive them, we shall have them. And tonight, God, because of your word, because of our faith in your word and our dependence upon your word, this service, this show right here, right now, and all that are listening are anointed above and beyond what they even recognize or realize as we've already placed it in your charge and care. We move forward expecting the great, for this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Listen, our scripture comes from Genesis, the second chapter, verses 2 through 25. It says these words, reading out of the Message Bible, says, God said, it is, it's not good for the man to be alone. I'll make him a helper, a companion. So God formed from the dirt of the ground all the animals of the field and all the birds of the air. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. Whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man named the cattle, named the birds of the air, named the wild animals, but he didn't find a suitable companion. God put the man into a deep sleep, and as he slept, he removed one of his ribs and replaced it with flesh. God then used the rib that he had taken from the man to make woman and presented her to the man. The man said, Finally, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Name her woman, for she was made from man. Therefore, man leaves father and mother and embraces his wife. They become one flesh. The two of them, the man and his wife, were naked, but they felt no shame. The Lord blessed the word for those who hear those who receive and those who do in Jesus' name. All right, so we've been talking. Now, last week, just to recap, we we dealt with my mouth got me into this, and we dealt with faulty communication, tying it together about what you say can do a whole lot concerning your relationship, your marriage in particular. But something was brought to my attention on last week that I really want to dive into tonight. So I want to tell you, those of you who are listening, those of you who are watching my social media, to prepare yourself because we're going to get downright dirty tonight in this talk. You're going to have to deal with it in Jesus' name. So what was brought to my attention is, again, this theme or this thought, are you marriage material? And talking about, my mouth got me into this, 
and faulty communication, we didn't take time to look at this piece. It is not good for the man to be alone. God said this is not good for the man to be alone. Now, here's what's amazing. God comes and talks to the man every evening as companionship. God creates all of these beasts, these animals, these birds, wild beasts, right, and brings them around the man. And then yet, he says, it's not good for man to be alone. Now, now, uh, we, now we, we have to think about this because the Bible says that, uh, 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 that, that God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I will be with you always, even till the end of the world. However, he says, it's not good for the man to be alone. What is God really saying? God is really talking about having a right relationship, right friendship, a right companionship. Uh huh. This is what he's really talking about. Someone that you can be in covenant with, someone that you can uh, embrace and engage and encounter and penetrate and whatnot. Uh, this is so that not only your physical being is not alone, but your 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 spiritual being is, and your into your intellectual and your your imaginative. Every part of you being won't be alone. All right. So it's not good for the man to be alone, but I'm noticing that people get married and they're lonely. But then there are people who are not lonely, but they're alone. Mm. And I'm noticing that people have discovered new ways to not focus on being alone or lonely. And that's what I want to deal with tonight. I want to deal with those individuals who find their companionship with toys. Those My goodness. Who find their companionship with blow-up dolls. Those who hmm. find their companionship with their fingers. Those who find their companionship with pornography. I, I want to talk about that because it seems to be the thing that people are afraid of. Wait a minute. And when you talk about that, I want to talk about those who bring in third parties or those who welcome orgies or those who welcome uh, swingers. Oh, uh, boy. Uh, uh, yeah, I want to talk about it because now we're opening up some <laughs> new doors of opportunity. But it's something that people don't really want to talk about. So let's talk about these different things. And let's say perhaps that a man is not being alone, though they're lonely. So they're finding, uh, if you will, companionship in gratification. Can we go there tonight? Anybody want to talk to me? All I want to say is wow. <laughs> Everybody shoving at the bit, so go right ahead, you guys. I, I'll let, let, me say something. let me say something because I will be talking about right. My mouth is swollen. I, I want you. Uh oh. I want you to understand this. This ain't nobody but God with this conversation tonight. Amen. Because I was in this same conversation earlier today. A friend of mine was telling me that she went to a leadership conference, and at the leadership conference, they got into this very thing. Sex toys, hand hand motions, all that. And then the leader of that particular workshop was bold enough to ask, how many of y'all will admit you're either involved or no vote involved? She said 90 to 95% of the audience hands went up. I said at a leadership meeting. Mm-hmm. She said 90 to 95% of the hands in a leadership meeting 
with us that says they masturbate, use toys, watch porno, whatever that scenario may be. I just want you to know, man of God, this is not, and anybody listening tonight, this is not a conversation for jokes and games. There is a spirit loose amongst the body of Christ. Listening good mm-hmm. tonight. And that's oh, probably that the end for me tonight. All right. Okay. We understand, Apostle. Amen. So this is very serious. So come on, somebody, talk to me. This is open for discussion. Okay, and this is Brother Otis Gabriel. Am I on the air? Go ahead. All right. No, I was listening to the the prelude to this conversation, and you said some people use uh, toys and uh, stuff. But what this is is that keep in mind that uh, our seeking pleasure, pleasure and happiness, is one of the uh, strong temptations, and it's also a uh, an element uh, in life that we strive for, we work for, and in the absence, many times, a, an individual with desires for pleasure, uh, just as strong as someone who was married, uh, still would have no partner. And if that individual can find pleasure, uh, what we call self-pleasuring, then the person would do that. It's just like if you uh, would like to have one thing, uh, like to have a car, and you can't afford it, then you get yourself a bicycle. And some of the toys are designed uh, for for instant pleasure and is a is not a replacement uh, for a partner. But it is an instrument that can provide pleasure uh, faster than the person can himself. Say, like for a woman, uh, in the absence of a phallus, that she can buy a little machine that has a battery in it that will uh, provide everything but the physical contact, the hugging, uh, the conversation. But in the end, you know, she is pleasured. And so they have the uh, mm. the hormonal uh, situation and activation and excitement as any other woman, but they do not have the privilege of having a man, so they don't really have to suffer. And I was looking at that, and I was listening. I listened. Think about the the element of right and wrong, or the morality portion of it, and it's not affecting adversely anyone else. As a matter of fact, no one else knows about it unless you go to one of those conferences that uh, that um, Apostle Smith was talking about today and somebody asks you, other than that, no one knows and no one has any negative impact for it. So those, those are quite common uh, throughout the world. And I would say a little bit more about it after someone else gives a uh, a comment uh, and their opinion on the same subject. Hey, Amen. Come on, talk to us. Thank you, sir. Talk some more. Let's hear Ladies. some more. Ladies. Either oh, okay, I, I'm going to say this. Now, uh, the question was, well, the question is, are you, are you marriage material? So is it, are you saying that are you marriage material if you're married to someone and uh, and you're still using um, toys and this and that uh, while this person while you're married to this person, okay? So has the toys taken place of the person that you're with? Um, have we gotten so immune to these toys that really you know we're in a marriage but we're not uh, but we're not having uh, physical contact as far as sex, but, we use, but we're just doing these toys. So what is the marriage about? Is it just paying bills? Is it just doing this? Is it no sex involved? Is it just toys? Now we don't have to, you know, touch each other. We can just use other things. Now another scenario, and I don't know if I'm the only one that heard this story about um, uh, sometimes uh, a woman might say, 
Well, I want to give my husband uh, a birthday gift, and I want to give him a gift of a, a third party. Okay, uh, that's what I'm going to do for the birthday, bring in a third party, uh, another woman, and, you know, and fulfill this one of these desires. And so when this, um, bringing in that person, and let's say uh, they, the husband like it, and this is, it could be vice versa, you know, um, and then when is that going to, uh, that that may be something that the husband may like and say, okay, let's keep doing this. Now, that was a situation where I saw or I heard about these two, these three guys who uh, committed themselves into a, I guess, somewhat a marriage um, relationship where they uh, made their vows and they were living, um, they were living all together as a threesome, sleeping in the bed together and so forth and so on. And it was great while it was going on. And then suddenly uh, somebody got jealous. Somebody got jealous and somebody got killed, you know, to the point where now I'm jealous. I just want to have that other person by myself instead of this threesome thing. So, you know, we may be thinking that we're um, – doing uh, a favor or have bringing in a birthday gift or whatever the case may be, but that can be uh, detrimental. It could be dangerous. It could be all these things, you know, when we bring in third parties and then when we bring in these toys and all these other things that's taking place of uh, the, the humanness of the other partner. So why are we, why are we married then? You know, if we if we mm-hmm. have to go to subject ourselves to all these other things, then why do we have a mate? That's just my that's my input to all this. All right, Sister Kim, are you going to say something? Sister Kim, are you going to say something before I start? All well, right. basically, those and, are some very good points. Um, what was just said, and yes. Um, I do hear many stories about orgies and um, those things in the church, <laughs> and it's very sad. It's not joking, man. It's by all means. I take that's how I deal with things. But um, it's you know it's something that's been. I'm gonna be honest. Even with the greatest man in the history, Solomon, he was the big one with sexual desires. Is it right? No. But what do we do? That is what um, we should focus on, not just pointing fingers. Because one thing I have come to learn, although you may not do that particular mm-hmm. sin, that may be somebody else, you know, low, you know, their low, their, their struggle. And so when I think about those type of activities inside of the church, it does cause me to feel sad, but it also caused me to know that we continue on praying and, you know, yes, um, it's wrong. Yes, people should know better. But, however, um, sometimes um, I don't know why people do things that they do, but God do. And that is my comment. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to preface on two base passages of Scripture based on what you have laid out, Apostle Whitlow. Yes, God did say it's not good for man to be alone, and the alone that God spoke of was be without companion. We all recognize that and ro- and realize that, but we live in a day and age, and this didn't just happen overnight. This has been going on for decades, uh, for centuries, as a matter of fact. We twisted the word to help assist the situation or the service that we desire. Paul said to the Roman church on one occasion to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. We can tackle it from that point. Then we can go over and hear what Paul said to Timothy. He told him what was going to happen and who would be and how they would react. And this is really what we are seeing in this day and in this age. Uh, Someone mentioned self-gratification. Someone mentioned toys and utensils. I'm not here to condemn or to condone. There's a reason for that because there are people who have become uh, sexually impaired, if I could use that word. 
as well as impotent. But then there are those who just like the idea of playing with ideas in their mind and experimenting with things. So on this subject, and thank you, Apostle Smith, for saying what you said, because I know of a particular conference down in the Virginia area. I wouldn't go near it because of the very thing we're talking about tonight. Already knew before I even left the house what was going to happen because plans were being made. But I'm going to leave that alone because that's a whole nother topic. Here's the bottom line on my end. The bottom line is this. Uh, to be alone uh, can be a good thing, but to be lonely never is. Because when you're lonely, it, you know the phrase or the saying, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. People who are lonely begin to hear things, whether it's true or not. If it fits their criteria, they're going to pay attention to it. And all it takes is for somebody to say, well, you know, there's an adult store down the street there. You know, if you can't find a man, you can run down there and grab a little something, something with some batteries, and at least you can get some kind of satisfaction. They keep forgetting that we as humans have an imagination. And in those scenarios outside of Christ, we will use our imagination. Suddenly we're having sex. And I'm just using names. I'm not, I am not. I don't want to use superstars names, people. But, you know, we, we will start uh, visualizing ourselves with superstars, certain individuals that go to church with us, people that we have that we're fond of or have a desire for. And Jesus put it best when he says this, any man that lusts after a woman in his heart, has already committed adultery. Yeah. So with that, yeah. I'm going to step back, and let's go to the next phase. Where are you going to go? Well, that goes, here, goes for women, too, do. by the way. Here's what I want to do. I, I want to do, I want to do a couple of things. One, I want to look at Hebrews, I believe it's 11 and 4. Because, yeah. Well, before I go there, before, before I touch that, I remember some years ago, that this church in the New England area, and so anybody know the New England area is everything from Connecticut back up to Vermont. All of that is called New England, from southern New England to northern New England. There was this, this, this pastor who had a men's conference. No women were allowed. And in this men's conference, he did something very unusual. He had, he had the men to pair up, and he said that he wanted them to look each other in the eye and stare at each other to see who would get an erection first. I don't know mm. what his point was in do that, because I think that's a little spaced out. Uh, uh, uh. Because I don't believe that a man should get turned on by a man. Mm -hmm. Just be truthful. Just me, I, I believe that it should be a woman that turns on a man, and I believe it should be a man that turns on a woman. However, however, I don't think that either should turn either on if they do not plan on making sure that they work. The other thing is, that in 1 Corinthians, uh, the seventh chapter, Paul addresses an issue. He says, as concerning the things that you have written to me, it is good for All a right. man not to touch a woman. Uh, my father used to say that you ought not, to, you ought not heat her up if you're not going to be willing to put the fire out. Now, but but I want to go beyond this now. I wanted to release that for a reason. But now here's what I want to do. I want to go to, to Hebrews, I believe it's uh, 13, 13 and 4. It says, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed is undefiled. But who among us God shall judge? So now you have the people who say, well, I'm married, so if it's what I agree to with my mate, then it must be okay. But my question is, is this, uh, these extra, uh, 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 these extra tools, are they really benefiting the couple or is it benefiting just one individual? 
because I cannot possibly see a vibrator, or for those of you who don't know, a dildo. I cannot see that fulfilling a man uh, in a in a in a marriage. Uh, however, I, I cannot see uh, some pretend pretentious. Uh, uh, um, I don't even know how to c- call it, uh, a blow-up doll benefiting a man. Now, gr- watch this. If, you, if you're talking about sharing in a pair of, like, listen to me, stay with me. If you're talking about sharing in a pair of underwears for him and her together, I can go along with that. If you're talking about uh, getting a swing, in in the room for each other, I can go along with that. But when we're focused on adding these toys or these tools that are only sent or made to benefit one person, then my question is, is this person really considering marriage or is this person just considering being pleased for themselves? Because let's tell the truth, on a good day, on a good day, if a man, if you will, inserts himself into a woman, provided he is strong enough to go inside without fainting, thank you, Lord, he goes inside, if he's strong enough, chances are that he can get possibly two, maybe three minutes at a good stretch before climaxing, whereas the average woman statistically needs seven to eight minutes to climax. So is this really about being pleased, or is it just another gesture to find a way to say, well, I'm really not being gratified, so I have to do something to make myself happy. Is this really a marriage or is this really just a a sex competition? I'd like to know. I think there are some people who are listening who would like to know because there is somebody who is frustrated. And believe it or not, the greatest reason that people step out of their marriage is because they are not sexually satisfied if we would tell the truth. Can somebody talk to me, please? I mean, you're right to a certain degree. Now, is it marriage material? If you come in, now, let's just be real here because some folk ain't going to say this. For the individual that's talking to, the man that's talking to a woman and they're talking marriage, if you're test driving the car before time, meaning before the ceremony, 90% chance at some point you'll run into that problem. And now because of sensual frustration, you will now find yourself looking for outlets that will bring about some level of satisfaction. And then it becomes acceptable to both that man and that woman. But to the end, then let's go on the other side here because uh, trust me, in counseling, I've heard these stories too. If you go in and not you, and I'm I'm using code. Y'all read between the lines. Y'all adults, you grown folks, so you know where I'm going. You go into that marriage not having test driven the car, and then you finally, after the ceremony, get to the consummation age. And I'm not trying to be funny. I promise you. You get in. She's expecting an all night long experience, and you you show your your 50 pump membership card, meaning you're very quick. Now she's got an issue and she wants to figure out what to do about this. And you work at it, work at it, work at it, but there's just no real answer. Now she feels like she has to go find an alternative. Okay. What I'm trying to drive at apostle is simply this. They can be marriage material if they start spiritually with the connective part. See, here's the problem. A lot of people don't want to spiritually connect before they physically attach to one another. They want to Mm -hmm. do it backwards. It's like putting the cart in front of the horse. Mm -hmm. And the way God designed Mm -hmm. sex, 
the way he designed marriage and the way he designed that relationship, it has to be a spiritual connection first. If you notice anything that ever happens in life happens in the spirit first, and then it manifests into what we call the natural. And if you're not going to mm-hmm. allow God to put super on your natural in that marriage in the area of sensuality and uh, uh, fulfillment and this, that, and the other, then mister or sister, whoever you may be listening right now, get ready for a few years of frustration. And, God, I pray it doesn't happen, but you're leading yourself mm-hmm. to a point where you're going to end up in a bad place, meaning you're going to have – you're going to call Tyrone. And you're going to find out that Tyrone can't get it done neither. Next thing you know, it's a chain reaction. I'm going to stop right there. Okay. I, I, when I lived in Savannah, when I lived in Savannah, I was a kitchen supervisor for a local hotel there. This was one of, one of the good ones, one of the good hotels. You know, it was a, a place with suites and conference rooms. And at least twice a, twice a year, there was what is known as a swingers club that would get together and rent out. And I mean, they would rent out the entire hotel. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, in order to be a part of that hotel, if you were going to stay in that hotel that weekend, you had to have a certain kind of wristband that said you were with this group. It was so mm-hmm. serious. I'm glad that it didn't happen during the daytime when I was there. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But 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 at, there was a certain time they would put up a curtain in front of the sliding doors so that w- nobody could see what was going on because they were allowed to walk around the property with nothing but lingerie. They were allowed to be exposed. And and they were allowed, if you will, to pleasure each other in open spaces. They could be in the elevator. They could be in the vestibule as long as they oh. said that they were part of this. Here's the problem, though. Here's the problem. And a good portion, I want to say 75% of them were married. Mm-hmm. They were married. But my thing is, if you're married, and this is just me, because I'm, I'm just different. If you're married, why would you want to share your goodies? I'll be honest with you. I have a hard time. I have a hard time sharing a, a Philly cheesesteak sub. I have a hard time feeling, uh, sharing some good fries. I have a good. I have a hard time sharing my chitlins. I, I have a hard time. Can I be honest? I have a hard time sharing my money. But but if I'm married, you think I'm going to share my goods? Me? I think not, because I'm not all the way saved yet. And I find out somebody even look at my money, I'm liable to act crazy. Okay. So my question is, are, are, are these people really understanding the value of marriage when they're doing these things? Or are they just using marriage as a cover-up to really uh, avoid dealing with real things that are inside their heart. This is what I want to know. Because I want to know, are these people what we call marriage material? Or are they just going through the motions? Come on, talk to me. Uh, I need to hear from some of you. Come on, Dr. Kenny, talk to me. Talk to me. Don't don't leave me here by myself. Don't let me drown in the water. Talk to me. Come on. And she left me hanging. I was talking. I'm so sorry. I, I do apologize. Well, well, I really believe that um, mm, are they marriage material? I don't know the answer, but what I can say is when you are seeking marriage material based on the word of the Lord, he gives us the guidelines to follow. And it's important that we Mm -hmm. follow those guidelines. That's why it's it's very key that we do wait for marriage so that we don't allow sex to be the dominant factor for getting married. You want to fall in love with someone's spiritual being first. 
and who they are as a person. And then the physical being, like the sexual and the holding hands and the Ewoks, um, will, you know, come naturally. But I really think when people seek to do extra activity outside of their marriages, there were signs in the beginning. And so it's up to that spouse that are being violated to see those signs. Because I have seen with my eyes pastors um, and bishops with, um, you know, groupies. And they take the groupies home. And the first lady, they just norm to that activity. What do you do? You can't call it out on it because it's like uh, when Jesus was at the well with the woman, those without sin cast the last stone. So I pray for them. And is it wrong? Absolutely. And should the men, um, you know, know the difference? Yes, they should because they are the angel of the church and their example can affect someone's belief. You could try to pass against someone's faith based on your action. That's why when you are called to be a preacher and a pastor over um, sheep, it's important that you have good characteristics of the Lord as much as you can because we do fall daily. And, yes, you know, I'm just saying, we're not perfect people. However, that, that is no excuse because when God calls you to do the word, you have a higher uh, responsibility. And so when I see those things, I really believe that some people are really sick in the head and a lot of them still have those egotistical ways. And it is up to God, not me. I can't judge anyone. I can only just say, wow, God, I'm leaving in this in your hands because I <laughs> am still working on the things that I, you know, I fall short on. And so it's, it's, a, it's an interesting question because I'm not the person to answer that, but is it wrong? Absolutely. To not only um, step outside of your marriages, but also to portray you, this person is portraying as if, if he's a man of God, but behind closed doors, he's dealing with Sheila and, and Kimberly and Jennifer on the side, and he has a wife, a first lady. I'm talking about things that I have seen in the church, not outside the church, and that is really sad. Brother Whitlow, mm. yes, sir. Brother Whitlow, let, let me chime in while I can. Uh, I think we need to look at two things. Mm-hmm. Brother Otis, brother Otis started started us out tonight with a good sociological and psychological reason why people use sex toys, go into orgies and things. Now, when you talk about the violation, and I use, I use that word strongly, when we start talking about the violation of marriage, I don't care if it's agreed upon upon the two parties. According to scripture, it is a violation of your covenant. Amen. The mm-hmm. Bible speaks about if you add a person into your marriage, it's fornication unto the single person, it's adultery unto the married. I don't care if it's swinging, I don't care if it's jumping. I don't care if it's if it, if it, if it voting or whatever you want to call it. When you add another entity into your marriage, you have stepped out of the ordinance of God into a place that is perfect. Now the next thing is, is that we had a pastor, it, it, uh, it, it, don't, it don't make no difference if you remember or not, but we had a pastor right here in New Haven that they had to bring him in to the clergy meeting because it was found out that he was having orgies right in his basement. Mm-hmm. 
keep uh, around the neighborhood, around the neighborhood, people from other places would meet at his house, and whatever went down, went down. And he was charging everybody X amount of dollars to get in. It was a big money maker. Mm. But it wow. was sin. It was sin for money. Amen. Mm. And, and we, we, that's why I said at the beginning tonight to all listeners, we can't patty cake this conversation. After the apostle put out what he put out, there's no patty cake that can happen with this conversation. At all. There's no loophole. There's no if or, or if not is right. It's just straight out wrong. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. It, 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 now, if you're single, then you need to find you a mentor, probably a strong married couple who you can talk to and get some guidance on how to better maintain your sexuality until you get a mate. Mm-hmm. Hello, goodbye. Well, let, 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 me, let me say, yeah, <laughs> let me say this. I said from the outset, and this is why I said what I said because of what you just explained, Apostle Smith. I didn't go through the detail. You put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. That's the express purpose why I said what I said. And I only said it because there are folk who will make excuses to do what they do. And they'll come up with reasons why they can do it. In other words, they use their liberty as a cloak to cover their foolishness. That's the bottom line. You know, are they marriage material? Uh, They may have started out as such. Are they marriage material after the fact? Possibility they could become again. But in that moment of their self-gratification, no, they are not. Because marriage is not about self-gratification. Marriage is not self-centered. Marriage is not egotistical. Marriage is about me, myself, and I. Marriage has the W-E in it. Marriage has the U.S. in it, and I ain't talking about this country. I'm talking about us. Marriage is two spirits just meeting, two spirits greeting, barely touching each other, two spirits coming to a place and point of intertwining and becoming one, walking in the covenant of Almighty God. I didn't want to go into all the explanation because it was the opening statement, but Apostle Smith opened the door, so let's just walk in now. All right, yeah. So, so then, because we keep talking about marriage material, so how about we how about we define marriage material the way God defines it? First of all, one man, one woman, legally, rightfully joined together according to God's standard. Let, let's let's qualify this again. One man, one woman, legally, spiritually joined together according to God's ordination or institution or by God's standard. As we go back again, it says that for this reason, man leaves his father and mother. Here's what we need to understand about that. Leaving father means you leave what you have become secure in. But when you leave mother, you leave what you have been nurtured by because now you are made to establish a new arena, a a new guideline for family. This is now your opportunity to establish a new guideline for family. Now, you cannot have a family that, uh, that does not incorporate your own being, your own chromosomes, your own DNA. For instance, you cannot possibly mix a watermelon and tomato seed 
and expect to get a full-blown watermelon or a full-blown tomato. So you have to get God's way. So it says, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave, embrace his wife. They should be so tight. They should be so in tune. I like what you said, uh, Bishop Desmond, that they they should uh, be, uh, they should put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And in putting on the Lord Jesus Christ, it should cause their mindset to align with what God has set up. And, and, and they are to become one flesh. Being one flesh means that, you, listen, and I'm going to say it just this way, he penetrates her, she receives the penetration, and she receives seed from him that they may birth something. If he's not penetrating her, and she's not what being is. penetrated by him, then the reality is it's not marriage. All right. Marriage is set up. Marriage is set up between him and her, not them with them. I know sure. that people don't want to talk about this because this is the stuff that becomes bothersome to folks. But but now now listen to me when I say this. If because 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 Bishop Devinet said that there are some complications for some people. Now, granted, while there's an impotence in some men, there is an inability to receive penetration by some women. Some women's walls are too weak to handle something of that magnitude. So we want to be truthful. So, you know, let's, let's be real. Nobody wants to have sex and not be pleased. Oh, boy. I'm going to get into some trouble here. But but, but don't no <laughs> woman want to be because her thing is if you're going to put it in, put it in and rock it. Oh, boy. And and, and, right. and, and no man wants to be truthful. Can I be truthful? No man wants to go into dry sheets. I'm sorry. No, he wants to go into a, a, a spaghetti mix. Something that is wet and ready. Lord Jesus, help me, Jesus. God, help me. Hey, Lord. Bless him, Jesus. <laughs> okay, I, I would like to respond to that. Uh, that 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 was quite <laughs> quite a uh, bit of analogy there. Explanation. <laughs> and uh, but but what what I was I was taking a look at was the uh, you know from the very beginning you were talking about uh, toys and so forth. That we have to keep in mind that uh, we have five sensory receptors, and uh, mm-hmm. through, through those, you know, we experience, you know, happiness and joy, pain and gladness, and but it's a pleasure that we would would be our preference. Our preference would be pleasure and positive experiences, and uh, that can start off with just the uh, visual. The visual pleasures. Uh, there are people that go to certain establishments just to pay, just to look at a beautiful woman because it brings them its visual stimulation on the pleasure mm-hmm. side. And then there are other places if you do not have a wife or do not have someone, it's where you can pay, you know, for sexual pleasures. Now we under we do understand, and uh, you know most of us on the line tonight uh, realize and we know exactly where to find this in the Bible. And, and even though we know that, have read it, that the uh, statistics show, and there are people on the line tonight uh, that can back this up, that if you get married, if a man gets married or a woman gets married to a person over. 15 years old, then the likelihood of this person being a virgin goes down every month. It's reduced every month after the age of 15 of this person being a virgin when they are married. And that goes for men and women. 
So by the time they get married, which is about the average age, is 21, by the time they get married, there's a lot of months have passed, and the likelihood of both parties being married at the age of 21 is down to maybe 10% maximum, which means very unlikely for the man and the woman, either one of the two, to have been married. So we have all that that uh, violation, uh, one of those about uh, waiting until marriage to have sex has already, that ship has already sailed. And... Uh, with the parties after they get married, we got to keep in mind that each couple that we meet is getting married for a different reason. We also have different a different criteria for what we call pleasure. Uh, we also have a different appetites. So there are some people that are unequally yoked when it comes to desires and when it comes to activities of pleasuring one another. Amen. And we're all familiar with that in every major city that we have been in, and that is around the world, it is easy. It, they, they're on the Internet now, so it's much easier. It's, it's simple. It's always been easy to find these parties where you – in our neighborhood, it's a BYOB, W, bring your own brown woman and your own brown bag. And if you come back as a couple, and many people just get together, just friends, men and women, to go there with someone. And once you go in, and then that, that little transition period, you can, you know, take off just your outer, outer garments at first. You leave on your shorts and your undergarments. But then before the night is over, you know, the women have begun to bring their little sexy stuff, and they have that right up under their clothes. And it's a swap meet. Now, since you have already violated the law about uh, fornication, that's already done. So now you're having uh, other opportunities with many other people and here's what's strange about that, even though some people bring to those parties someone who's just a friend or who just like to have multiple parties, but there are many, many married and engaged couples at those parties. And for the ones who are married, for the ones who are married, attending parties of that magnitude of getting other, other parties uh, that the swingers do not have any higher rate of divorce than couples that are strictly dyadic, meaning just one-on-one, -on -one, two people. The divorce rate is no higher. It's just that the desire and the uh, criteria for pleasure is different in every single person. Now, here's the shocker. If they found mm -hmm. that some people you think maybe because they are married to this person or have a title like this, uh, there are certain titles where you don't expect people to have those types of desires, and but that range um, with any couple you meet, you can ask them privately about some of the things that they would like to do, and you spoke earlier about this uh, woman having a party for her husband, and he has probably expressed over a period of time that he would like to have a threesome, and he comes home for his birthday, and there's Miss Pretty sitting there alongside his wife. And he says to himself, happy birthday. But again, that law that we have all, that sin of the adultery, that ship has sailed many years ago, but people are different, and everyone is different. And then the last thing we take a look at that is, is this doing any harm to anybody else? Is anyone suffering? 
uh, because of that. Is anyone being denied any privileges because these three people are at home in this person's bed, uh, one man with two women or one woman with two men? And so the thing is that it's different, and it has been happening not only, somebody said, a few decades. uh, That has been taking place since the beginning of the world. And even in the Bible, they talk about most some of the religions, and most of the religions in the Bible that were contrary to the Jewish religion are the religions that had sex as part of their ritualistic performances every day. So that is a situation that we take a look at when you say let's be truthful and honest and look at the real world. That is the real world as it is today. All right. Well, Brother Mm -hmm. Otis, I want to interject just a little bit, and I respect you highly. You already know that. But honestly speaking, from your perspective, in your era, yes, you're absolutely right. But when you look at generations X, Y, and Z, it's a total different animal. And I'm not understanding how, why, or when they got to this point. Nowadays, they are engaging in sexual activity. There's no emotion. There's no feeling. There's no concern. Their their word today, and it's probably changed since I last heard, was smash. They walk up to an individual, married or single. They don't care. They don't. They just don't care. You want to smash. And if they look good enough, if they got that slim, trim body with their 400 tattoos, or they got that uh, 36, 24, 36, you know, with the uh, Botox injected behind and the silicone-filled breastuses with that uh, curve appeal in the crotch area, you know what I'm talking about. This is the, the generation, generations X, Y, and Z are literally uh, – Paul talked about that generation. I mentioned Timothy a little earlier tonight. And the reason why I mentioned it, because in that particular dissertation from chapter 3, verses 1 down to verse 6, it talks about men, meaning men, women, uh, the human race, are lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. which we, And we're not seeing anything new. We talk about Sodom and Gomorrah. We do the traditional things. But we never talk about the uh, the metro the metro man, and I don't know if I should call her a metro woman but they're not or whatever. Into the, because, but, the, but, the thing, but the thing is, they're not into the world of the church. They don't even care about the church. So that's why well, I think that is totally thing, different than what he's talking up. about. Hold on, sis. Hold on, sis. Yes, they are. There are people in the church doing this, okay? This is nothing new. When I tell you, now see, I'm, I'm gonna tell you a little history about me, and I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not ashamed of it because God delivered me from it when I came out of it. I dealt in pornography, meaning from a professional level, in my early days when I was a teenager, before I even got saved. So there was a lot that I saw before I even got to the cross of Christ, okay? I told the story before, and I'm going to tell it one more time. There was one time I was on a movie set. I was about to sign a contract to do pornography, and they had this one scene where these two guys and this one girl were supposed to get together and handle some business. It was supposed to be an anal scene, but the girl didn't want to do it, and she was adamant about not doing it. I mean, she was adamant about not doing it. And so they took a break. They talked. The uh, director and the two guys talked. Uh, And the girl went over into the dressing area or the freshening up area, and they went in, and they changed the scenario of the scene where they put the girl on top of the first guy. He held both her arms down while the other guy came up behind her, snuck in, and penetrated her. That was the loudest scream I ever heard in my life. I left from that point. I didn't want nothing to do with it. When I'm telling you the stuff that I'm sharing, I can't tell you everything. But the stuff that I'm aware of and the stuff I've been made aware of, sis, I wish I could say the church is purple now. Our elderly people fail to teach and to train, and as a result of that, we see these children doing these crazy, wild, ridiculous things. And I'm sure I remember Apostle Smith sharing a story about cousins getting together. 
and doing some wild stuff. But we're not here to judge. We're just here to talk about are they marriage material. And I'm going to stick with the answer I gave earlier. In Christ, yes. Out of Christ, I can't tell. But in Christ and doing what the world does, I say no because they're not ready. The covenant becomes, should become the most important thing that anybody carries out. That is the thing. It's about covenant. It is about covenant. And if you have been converted, then there there is something that happens when you are converted. You become transformed by the renewing of your mind. So granted, there may have been some experiences you had prior to getting married. But because you want to do it God's way, there are some things you just don't affiliate with anymore. Now, I want to say this. If you don't like me, you just don't like me. I believe that if you are married, that you have the right to explore your mate. You have every right to go from the rooty to the tooty with your mate. That's between you and your mate, and can't nobody come in between that. But I do believe that when you begin to add little things into what is supposed to be sacred, slowly but surely it becomes a stretch to see the sacredness of it, and eventually, it becomes a disinterest and a dissatisfaction. Watch this. Uh, Bishop Designate, you talked about people having an imagination. Well, an imagination fosters masturbation. It motivates forn- fornication. It invigorates gratification simply all for fabrication. These are the things that should be involved in a couple that belongs to the kingdom of God. Now, granted, people of the world, they do not give, they do not govern themselves according to the word or the laws of God. But because we as believers are, then we have to have a difference of approach to this thing. Uh, here's a here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, uh, let me let me go ahead and 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 and, and shoot this out there. Uh, married folk who are marriage material don't talk about their marital in, endeavors and encounters to other folk. I don't care who it is. You don't share it with your home girl. You don't talk about it with your homeboy because it's not their business. When you're married, your marriage, according to the word of God, is honorable in every facet of the word, and your bed is undefiled. Why take an undefiled bed and bring it into a conversation so that now you can do comparisons, and now all of a sudden you're trying to take on something that God did not authorize you to take on? Uh, there are some things that I'm not me. I'm sorry. I'm just a little stirred in my spirit because what I really want is I really want to see people who are married have the best encounter and experience of marriage possible. I still go back to this because when God gave it to me, I believe is what he meant when he shared with me. Marriage is the basis of human society, and society is reinforced by marriage. It is the basic institution found in all human societies because no other union of men and women meets all the requirements of mating, homemaking, love, and personality development at the level of biological, psychological, social, ethical, and spiritual advancement. I believe it, I stand on it, and I will not leave it alone. Anybody going to talk to me before we get off here tonight? (laughs) I'm just talking... 
I want people to be married to the children. I don't want, but listen, at the end of the day, I don't want people to get married just because, you know, they're hot and bothered, just because they want to get their rocks off. That's not why I want you to get married. No, no, no. I don't want you to get married because you need somebody to take care of you. I don't want you to get married because you're hoping that somebody is going to raise your children. With you. No, that's not the reason. R- really, the reason I want you to get married, the reason I want you to be married to the material, because I really want you to bring glory and honor to God. It's your purpose. I really want you to get to your destiny. I know I'm not going to get no hand taps on that, but that's what we really want when it comes to marriage. We want to see successful marriage, not people wasting their life, wasting their time, wasting their money, and most of all, wasting their juices. Say what you want, you I, I agree with you. I, I, I agree with you. I, I mean, you know, and we can talk about the reasons why people get married. We're never going to know all of them because back in the day I heard about them, never seen one pray. I never, and at this stage of life, I don't think I ever will. They used to talk about the shotgun weddings, okay? And mm-hmm. you know what that was all about. You get the girl pregnant, they're going to force you to marry mm-hmm. her. And these and these couples stayed together for 20, 30, 40, and 50 years. Some of them learn to love each other, fall in love with yeah. one another, and then there are those who can't stand each other, but for the sake of the children, they stay together. I'm telling you, uh, ladies and gentlemen that are on this panel and those who are listening, you have never seen an apostasy of marriage like you're seeing in this day. you got to talk about the world because at some point, those people that we call the quote-unquote world actually were in the church. A lot of them got pregnant, Mm -hmm. they was in church, and then things didn't work out. Mm -hmm. The pastor wasn't there. There was no support team. Uh, And I'm not blaming the church. I'm just simply saying some of the stuff that I've heard and have seen over the days, weeks, months, and years. And even in this given day, how is it that you start a brand-new church? It's a pastor and four women that start a church, and about three years later, there's seven kids, and they all happen to look like the pastor. I'm going to leave that alone, too. Let's move forward. But I'm with you on that. We look to share information that's going to cause longevity in marriage to help individuals to know how to deal with situations and circumstances. Sex, money, and communication are the three majors in every marriage. And sex seems to be rising to the top when before it used to be communication, money, and then sex. Sex has now moved to the number two position, assumingly. This is earnest one and one. So your salvation, your wisdom and understanding and knowledge has nothing to do with what I'm saying right here. This is my personal opinion. And because sex is starting to rise up on the ladder, you now find people trying to find ways to achieve some level of gratification. Me, on a personal note, and without being disrespectful to anybody listening on this line right now, I've always said, and I've said it to my wife, the day that I come to the place and point that I can no longer do what I need to do. <laughs> Man, we better just look for other ways. And there are other ways. See, it's not always about the penetration. I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. Spiritually speaking, if you are connected, you're already halfway home. And a lot of us won't recognize that and realize that. We're looking for love in all the wrong places because we're not looking for love. We're looking for lust. We're looking for a night of passion. And I believe it was the late Della Reese that said in a movie one time, and I think the name of the movie was Thin Line. She says, a night of of pleasure can bring a lifetime of pain. Mm -hmm. That's right. Listen, there's so much stuff that we have looked at tonight, but these, these are some real issues. And while we may laugh at certain things, I want us to look at realities. These are some things that exist not only in the world, but they exist in the church. That's true. And I think that if the church doesn't address these issues, then we're going to have a church with a bunch of bastards. We're going to have a church that is godless, fearless, faithless, Spiritless, flameless. And most of all, they're going to be marriageless. And I really don't believe that's what God wants. 
I really believe the reason that God introduced marriage is because this is really what he wants with people. He wants a union that's in order. Okay, I'm not going to get too much help there. But I really believe this is the objective to, to see the typology of what God wants when we're there in heaven. He's not concerned about this thing we call denomination. He wants a union between his people. And that has become a challenge. Why? Because of these ideas about what marriage is instead of standing on what God has ordained it to be. I believe, and I'm going to say this, I believe that if you want to be marriage material, then you need to do what's called a SWOT test. Yes, I said a SWOT. Let me spell that for you. S-W-O-T, a SWOT test. What is a SWOT test? Well, to be marriage material, you have to look at your strengths, you have uh-huh. to look at your weaknesses. I like that. You have to look at your opportunities, and you have to look at your threats. And until you know for sure where you are okay at and where you're struggling at, there's a possibility that marriage may not be in your best interest. I know the Bible says that it is better to marry than to burn, but 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 listen, let's tell the truth. You don't want to get married and get fried just because you didn't want to burn. Because your passion is one thing, but your peace of mind and your purpose is another. Say that. Say that. People who said married because it's the best thing to do. And just days later, why did I do this? I'm so miserable. But you said it was the best thing to do. Were you married to material? Were you ready for marriage? Or were you married to somebody you could do the mighty rocket knocking the boots with? Is that what it was? Is you wanted somebody to hold your clothes or wanted somebody to close the door? You wanted somebody to turn off the lights? What? Mm-hmm. Really? What was your thought process about getting married? Listen, there are so many things that I want to look at. I, I want to deal with some other things on this subject. I want to. I I feel that this is some meaty, meaty stuff. And I feel and I and I'm afraid that if we leave this subject too soon that 2020 will end with hundreds of marriages taking place and enter into 2022, uh, excuse me, 2021 will have all these marriages, but by 2022, they'll be over because people didn't know whether they were marriage material. I want to be truthful. All the years that I've experienced marriage, all the years that I've experienced challenges, all the years I've experienced strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, I've realized that I still need work. I'm man enough to say I still need work. I'm man enough to say, look, I've been down that road. I know what it smells like in being so. I know what it is to be happy. I know what it is to be lonely. I know what it is to struggle in this area. And because I know what it's done to my heart, I don't want you to deal with the same thing. I'm trying to help somebody. This, this is my passion because I love love. I love marriage. And I love a good woman. But I can't stand mess. Y'all can say what y'all want to. I don't care. I've been called everything but a child of God anyway. But one thing you can't say, you can't say that I ain't real. I'm going to tell the truth. Okay. I'm going to tell the truth. I want what God wants, and I'm desperate to get it so much that I'm not willing to risk anything just to have it. Because let's tell the truth. Just because you make Soldier Boy rise and go to battle, 
doesn't mean that soldier boy want to fight a war with you. Just Say because that. he can slip away and slide in doesn't mean he wants to come out. Lord Jesus, everybody ain't ready for this real talk. I told you it's real. It's raw. It's relevant. It's what's happening. My name is Apostle Irvin Whitlow, and I thank you for joining me tonight with these great people on this panel in the persons of Apostle Vincent L. Smith, Bishop Designate Ernest E. Richard Jr., Dr. Kimmy Robinson, G. Johnson, Brother Otis, and Teresa Gabriel. I honor every one of you. I salute you. Let me submit to you that it's not good to talk good and walk bad. It's not a great combination. So I'll submit to you that your marriage will be meaningless until your mate becomes meaningful. Join us again next week, Saturday, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central, as we shall talk some more about making marriage meaningful. And over the course of the next several days, give yourself a SWAT test. Look at your strengths. Look at your weaknesses. What are your opportunities? What are your threats? Give yourself a SWAT test. See if your marriage material. Until next time, we say shalom, shalom. Hey, Kenny Kim, do me a favor. Drop that track. Go with God and he will Come on somebody If you know you've been redeemed And the son has set you free You are open up your mouth And give him all the praise And all the glory And all the honor That's be his name Because you deserve it is my song to sing I am free yeah. I'm free to lift my hands Holy Father I'm free to worship you Oh God, oh God, yeah Yeah.